All right, hi everyone, it's Nick Holland. Um, we're catching up with uh, Danny Watts. Hi, Danny. How are you? You all right? Yeah, we're really well. We had a, a super trip down to Le Mans. A um, little bit restricted in our, our movements and so on, but um, I think we managed to catch up with uh, Johnny and Nick Leventis on the pit lane. And um, I've had a brief chat with Nick Bailey about the result. What a result. Fourth place. Well done. Yeah, especially in the uh, company, 23 cars in P2. Um, probably the strongest grid for that class ever. And to, yeah, I mean, after Spa, where we didn't even finish six hours to finish fourth at Le Mans, after 24 is a, a huge achievement. And um, I mean, it's stands for hard work everyone uh, has put in, not only the circuit, but also in the preparation and build-up to the event. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, ahead of you, you had custom metal in terms of uh, the Alpine Areca and uh, the 26 G Drive Areca. You also had the, the very customized um, BR01 ahead of you. Um, but wonderful to see the Gibson um, on its on its final flourish, open topped, out there mixing it up. Yeah, what will probably be its last ever visit to the Moor, won't it? I mean, it's a uh... It's a car that's been around a number of years now, a uh, well-established car that's achieved a lot in its path, and um, it was a nice little send-off really, wasn't it? So, I mean, yeah. I personally enjoy in driving, driving this particular car and have done in its old guys as well, back in LFP1, we had it in, I think, 2008, 2009. It's always been a good car, and, you know, it, it, you do enjoy the old-school feel of being open and part of the car, yeah. you know, and putting your visor up instead of the, the closed top car, but no, it's a, a great send off for the car last weekend at Le Mans. Yeah, the, um, yeah, just moving to the race, I mean, we saw um, Johnny Kane took the start um, behind the safety car, obviously, in the, the very wet conditions, um, you were then next up, what, what's it like getting into a soggy open cockpit? And when Johnny jumped out, and uh, just before I jumped in, I could see a pub of water in the seat. I was just about to trip in. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it wasn't comfortable. Um, but, I mean, it's the more you get in. We, we do a quadruple spin, and you get on with the job and focus on that. Um, I don't worry about anything else. So, it's not an issue. Um, the track was obviously green, the rain, overnight rain on Friday night. So... And also the track evolution at Le Mans is such that, you know, throughout the race it's just going to get better and better and better. That's exactly what happened. Um, and our car is known for being very consistent and good on its tyres. And it was, uh, it was a pleasure to drive it in, you know, in not only daytime, but also nighttime. Yeah. When you took over, had things pretty much dried out or were you on inters initially? I went out on uh, slick straight off, I think. Right, yeah. Because those were the best tyres for the conditions. Um, I think Johnny probably had the worst conditions possible for any driver. Yeah. And he did an absolutely sterling job to manage it. I think at one stage he was up to uh, fifth early on in the race. We started eighth, I think. So, um tricky conditions, people falling off left, right and centre. But, I mean, as we all know, at the moment, you don't need to be a hero in hour one, hour two, it's being there at the end of the bounce. And, yeah, I mean, it was just a, an all-round top, top performance for the team, really. Yeah. Um, just incredible the amount of hours that the lads put in behind the scenes, prepping the car, and making sure it goes well. So, well, it certainly did. Yeah. You know, I um, our, our data analysis we've sort of uh, got you down as um, spending the most number of countable laps, so um, you know, far faster laps um, in the car. Um, John is obviously um, he's a hot shoe and um, very quick, but you were in there for longer um, on our counting anyway. Um, yeah. Brilliant performance and a great performance from Nick as well, having to do the six hours and so on. That um, 
It was a bit longer for him than normal, was it not? It is, yeah, because it's a new rule for this year, and he had to um, do more time in the car. Um, he was down to do a double to start with, and actually was going so well and enjoying it that much that he did a, a triple in him. Yeah. So, I mean, credit to him. Uh, it's, um, it's a race where you not one driver's going to win the event, and you know, all three of them to work together and help each other in getting the best possible result. And obviously, the more time you spend in the car, the more time off you get. Yeah. Um, back and then get ready for your next spin. Um, and it just seems to work really well between the three of us this year. Um, um, and it was also, well, as always, I mean, it's a really hard event. We know that. Um, tough, tough race mentally, not so much physically. But, um, yeah, I think the whole team did a, an absolutely cracking job. And, and uh, yeah, fourth was ju- just a reward for the amount of effort that's gone in behind the scenes. Yeah, well, it, it's it's testament to the fact that practice and the preparation and so on really pays off. Um, in particular, I mean, the team were, they handed you, I think, one minute and 13 seconds um, in terms of time that you were stationary in the pits. Um, over the car in front of you, the 37 BR01. Um, yeah, there was no other car that stopped um, for less time than the um, gorgeous Stracker Racing Gibson. Well, we put a lot of effort and time into the pit stops, um, and we do it pretty much every day when there's time and the boys have got a moment where they've, they've got time off working on the car. It's something that in the end, especially at the ball, counts for a lot. And, yeah, those statistics are, are, are really good and important and shows how good the boys are at turning around the car when we come into the pit, bagging the cars on and fueling. Um, and it's just so critical at a race like the ball where you just got to be possible And, I mean, we talked about before how the six-hour race is no longer you know, go around nice and steady, look after car, it's actually a spirit race. Well, in some respects, the old 24 hours of wise is exactly the same as a race. Not only do you need to be quick on your outlap and in-lap and every stint, but the lads need to be quick on the pit stops. And, yeah, clearly Stracker are the best in the, in the field. And, again, it goes back to the hard work and practice that you do behind the scenes it counts for so much. Yeah, uh, a small but beautifully formed team. Um, it was lovely to see. I saw as you were getting ready for the final stint, um, my, I had my camera trained on the box and I could see you stood with Johnny and I think there was for some fist bumping and so on going on around the team as uh, as you took the car over for the final time. <laughs> yeah, that's a fairly standard thing with us. Like you say, we are a small team, but we're a close-knit team and most members of the staff have been there a number of years. Now we know each other pretty well. Uh, we've been through good things together, we've been through bad things together, but I think what makes it such a good team is that apart from all the adversity, when you get a good result like at the Moor, it's, uh, you can celebrate together and have a lot of fun, but yeah, it's a cracking little team and it's my, what, eighth year now with the team and I thoroughly enjoy every minute of every race that I do with them. Yeah. Well, we certainly hope... Um Stability is the word, and um, having got to where where you've got to, plans for 2017, we hope everybody um, stays together and continues to win together. Um, it was it was quite a res- result, and uh, we were proud to be there. Yeah, well, I think everyone's uh, looking forward to a little bit of time off now. <laughs> yeah. After the crawling event, and uh, then uh, get a bit of sleep group ready for Nürburgring. Yeah, which is coming up quite quickly this this time around because it's a month closer than uh, last year. Yeah, normally it's a big break, but yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to be straight back in the car actually. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, sadly, I'm not going to be able to make that one because uh, family commitments and so on will have me off elsewhere. But um, I'll be looking out for you on the timing. <laughs> good stuff. Thanks a lot. All right. Good luck, guys, and um, keep up the good work at Stracker. Very much a fan fave.
Thanks ever so much. Appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers, Danny.